Welcome back, you've built the exiles. So with PoE being so close and just around the corner, we can literally almost smell our GPUs igniting from overuse of our PCs for that week. I wanted to talk about an area where I have a fair bit of experience from Path of Exile 1, and that is essentially how we should be approaching builds in Path of Exile 2. So we're just going to cover off on some stuff around mechanics, you know, predictions that I have around builds, uh, you know, mobility. I, I have some a bit of a take on that because I think the way the game is being designed with so many skills will lead into mobility. Um, and we'll talk about things like environmental builds, uh, weapon switching, and uh, the most important thing I'll talk about very last that we all should be considering. Anyway, let's get into the video and let's have a bit of a chat. And also, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, don't forget to follow the Twitch, the YouTube, subscribe to this channel, and uh, and the X down in the description below. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep cracking on. So. If you're, uh, if you're like me and, uh, and anybody else, realistically, uh, you know, we're probably gonna f*** up our first build in Path of Exile 2, let's be real. And that is totally fine. Now, one of the biggest things I see where people fail at when putting together their builds, um, in particular in a new game, is, uh, is when they try and make something perfect, uh, and in particular, like, the early access is totally designed for us to, like, test the waters and see how skills work and things like that and it's going to be changing constantly as we play through so what we see in early access may resemble nothing that ends up being the final product that we get maybe in six to twelve months who knows how long the early access is going to go for so a couple of things we're only going to get three acts that we know of so far but obviously there's hopefully a press release in the next week so we'll find out some more information uh, we don't really know if we're going to get access to any sort of cutdown endgame or mapping system. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So the biggest thing I'd say is when you are putting together your first builds, um, and I know I'll probably fall into the pitfall of like, this isn't working, rah, rah, rah. Don't stress too much about the little things initially. Really what the early access is going to be about is learning the new, all the new mechanics and the skill interactions which I'd consider is a way more important task as opposed to trying to create the perfect first build in Path of Exile 2. But, um, you know, each to their own. If that's what you want to do personally, understanding mechanics is way more important and that's what we'll get into in the next part of this video. Okay, so the way that I take Path of Exile 2 is mechanics are pretty much going to be one of the most important things to understand about the game. And I guess reading into this, the game has a lot more mechanical interactions with skills and ailments and on hit proc effects, stun, you know, freeze, things like that than what we've ever seen before. Like there's a lot of skills that have literal build up built into the way that they work. This means understanding the mechanics is significantly more important and overall will determine how a build works in Path of Exile 2. Um, and understanding mechanic interactions is also really important. So you know, this skill leads to this skill, leads to this skill, leads to this skill. In Path of Exile 1, usually, you know, you'd have auras, one skill, maybe two, that would sort of be interdependent of each other, and it wasn't too complex. That's where you get the concept of one button builds from. Path of Exile 2 is totally different in that respect. So now we have to think about skill combinations. So things like armor break, which we'll talk about in a moment, you need to proc armor break to then basically be able to do bigger physical damage. So what skills can you line up that provide armor break that you will then hit away with your next damage dealing skill that won't need to apply armor break because the armor break will last for a certain amount of time. Um, understanding these queuings of skills is probably going to be one of the most important things. And the queuing of skill is going to be dependent on the types of ailments and or effects that you want to have. Another really cool one that they're adding in is like pin, right? And we'll talk about that in a moment, which is a new mechanic being added in the Path of Exile 2 from what we can see. This is a huge change in how we look at making builds versus how we did in Path of Exile 1. So, <coughs> pardon me. In Path of Exile 1, you know, Ignite is simple, like you applied Exposure or maybe Scorch. Um, and or you know you applied a scorch effect from your uh, from your boots like Legacy of Fury or something like that, and then you'd proc ignite Bob's your uncle done right, um, or you'd put a curse or hex on an enemy that would increase the amount of damage they take. 
Path of Exile 2 is very different. Um, so let's have a bit of a dig into this and, uh, and talk about this. Rightio, so some of the mechanics that I've picked up on, and I'm not going to do like a full robust breakdown in this video. If you want me to go through and pick apart all the skills we know of so far and talk about all of these different new mechanics that are in the game, then I'm happy to do another video. Actually, it's not a bad idea. We might do that video tomorrow. Um, so we all now know that we have to apply things like armor breaks. So basically, the way that I interpret this is, you know, you crack through enemy armor and then you're able to basically penetrate the enemy with whatever other skill that you're using, right? So there's a bunch of skills and supports. I'll put them up on the screen that I identified that can do this. So basically, you're going to be looking for with merely physical damage skills and or range skills, you want to apply an armor break element and then you want to have a follow up skill to then take advantage of applying armor break. Now, armor break might realistically be a really quick skill. And then you're going to have a slower, more sluggish skill. And then in between there, you want a skill that's going to stagger the enemy a little bit or stun them potentially. And we have a thing called stun build up, which we'll talk about very shortly. So that's the sort of synergies that we're talking about around the way that you would build a, um, a character in Path of Exile 2. Previously, you just like proc impale, get it up to 100% and Bob's your uncle, you're done. <clears throat> now, directional blocking. This is another one. Um, I haven't got, got a skill yet that sort of shows this off but essentially um block is going to be really interesting so i think there's a block channeling skill that's in the list of skills currently and uh and from what i've seen there is a directional blocking component of the game but we haven't seen very much of that and i'd say like templar is going to be something and the warrior is going to be something that's very strong in this so that's still a uh, a thing that we haven't seen much of i think ziggy d had some play uh gameplay for this stuff um corrosion so we haven't seen a mechanic like Corrosion. So Corrosion is a new uh, support gem. I think it's a support gem off the top of my head that um, that allows you to essentially rip enemy up, our armor apart. And then once you can crow the enemy armor with dot, then you can apply more physical damage or other formats of damage beyond the armor. So that's something else to look at. Stun is now a build up over time mechanic. So the more hits <coughs> accumulate to a total stun, and what we understand now is things like stun, where they were never allowed to apply to unique enemies or bosses previously in Path of Exile 1. There's actually a, um, a mechanic, well, it allows for that in Path of Exile 2. So you can stun bosses, for example. The other really cool thing is you have a uh, support gem now called, or a gem called Cast on Stun. So that means potentially, you know, if you're playing a fire-based warrior that has a spell or iron grip element, you could potentially load up a bunch of stun skills, which then the stun procs. And I think the stun is global as well. So it's not based on the actual skill that you're hitting with, but you know we'll have to find that out the hard way. And then basically you can cast a bunch of spells on that stun, which is really cool. I think that's a really cool concept. Um, I did run across something that has accuracy penalty. Uh, so that's a thing now in Path of Exile 2 where you can get increased damage but at the compromise of your accuracy, um, in particular on like crossbow skills and things like that. Um, freeze and shock build-up mechanics are a thing in Path of Exile 2. And in fact, there is now, <clears throat> pardon me, there's trigger gems for this. So you've got cast on freeze and cast on shock, which is really cool. Pin is a new mechanic. There's a support gem called lockdown and then the main skill gem called pin. Basically, you pin the enemy down and you do increasing levels of damage over time for the longer of the, du of the duration that that enemy is pinned for. Um, that didn't exist in Path of Exile 1 and will be really interesting to see how that plays out in PoE 2. Um, there's also priming. So for electricity or lightning skills, uh, you can prime enemies and this will allow for more damage to be inflicted on them. So you can prime stuff. I, I find that pretty cool. Um, and there's tons of other interactions. So as I said, we might pick this apart and do another video, but uh, I think this is really cool. And yeah, this is what I mean by there's just a lot, of, a lot of new mechanics that we need to understand. So trying to rush out and find a build that works for, you know, trying to rush out and make the first builds or build guides or whatever, or following other creators build stuff initially is, you know, probably not going to be the most fun because it takes away from the exploration of playing the game. But also on top of that, like we're going to be finding all sorts of weird and wacky and funky combinations that go outside the standard reservation, uh, the, outside the standard recommendations of what GGG is going to apply and interactions that even they probably haven't even thought of that might be game breaking and will probably get patched out before 1.0. But 
game mechanics are going to be huge in understanding how to play builds moving forwards and that's going to be one of my focus areas on both the channel and in the way that I put builds together moving forwards and the way that I'll approach the early access. Okay, so skill chaining equals mobility. So one thing that sort of came up in some of the comments is, you know, we continually look at mobili mobility, but we need to change the way that we think about that. So we're getting a dodge roll, which is slower than the walk or, you know, uh, movement speed in the game that we know of so far, right? So we know that we're getting movement skills like leap slams coming back, probably flame dash, stuff like that, but they take time to cast and they're sort of more for like bringing packs together near you or inflicting damage, things like that, or disrupting enemies. So that leads me to, well, okay, well, how is mobility going to be addressed in Path of Exile 2? And I actually seem to believe that mobility is going to come from skill chaining, right? So you move around as you apply skills. Ex perfect examples of this is the monk, right? Or the huntress. Highly mob mobile characters that are going to be really focused around quick clear and like jolting around bosses and things like that versus like the warrior, which is going to be more clunky and slower. Uh, and it's going to be more focused around like being able to take big hits, breaking armor, staggering the enemy, um, and then basically walking out covered in blood. And, you know, two men walk into the ring, one man survives sort of scenario. Oh, that's why I love the warrior. I think it's a fantastic class. I'm going to be playing it. But what I'm getting at is we've got to move away from the way that we think about Path of Exile, one where you pop on a Quicksilver flask, you put on 30% plus movement speed boots with Tailwind, and then you just go blasting at like 100% movement speed um, and start thinking about how Path of Exile 2 mechanics and skills work moving forwards, which is more so sort of predicated around chaining together. So we know we can have up to nine skills and that means that potentially you could clear maps with a, a combination chain of like, you know, eight skills, for example. Who knows? Who knows how big maps are? We don't know enough information. The other thing that leads me to is understanding cooldown and cooldown reduction or recovery is going to be a really interesting concept, and I don't know what that's going to look like in Path of Exile 2. There are definitely skills that are inflicted that have cooldown inflicted, so you do more damage, but your cooldown goes up, sort of thing. So I think actually playing around with cooldown chaining and things like that, like you're going to have a bunch of buttons mapped, and then basically you're going to hit go, you know, you need to go through skills one through to six. Um, to be able to get the best possible outcomes and to be the highest optimum levels of mobility. Anyway, I think it's just a, ma a matter of how we look at how we build builds moving forwards and mobility is going to come from putting skills together, which is different to how Path of Exile 1's worked in the past. All right, so the other big thing here, and this was shown in ExileCon last year, is the ability to on the fly switch weapons. Well, and here we too, we have another major new system to introduce to solve these kinds of problems. And it starts with weapon swap. The staff Octavian is using here has an ice mod on it that makes it great for when he's using his ice spells. We would also like to be able to make sure that the build works just as well for his lightning spells. If Octavian equips his previous staff in his second weapon set, you can see that it appears on the character's back. Now we're going to open up the skills screen. If Octavian opens up the skill options for his lightning skills, you can see here that you can choose which weapon sets are usable with each skill. First, we uncheck set 1 from being used by his lightning skills. Then, we go through the cold skills and turn those off with his lightning weapon. Now, when we use Spark, the character will automatically switch to the lightning staff on his back and then use the skill. When Octavian uses Ice Nova, his character automatically switches over to his ice staff before using it. Figure each skill for which set to use, or both if you don't mind which. There's a very short time penalty to switching, so it can be good to leave some skills on both sets if it doesn't matter which weapon set you're using. But we still have the problem of passives. Wouldn't it be nice if we could specialize in both cold and lightning passives on the character? Well, in Peewee 2, you can. We're on the passive skill screen here, and you can see that we're close to both a cold and a lightning cluster. At the top right of the screen, you can see where we have some weapon set specific points to allocate. If Octavian holds shift, he can allocate set 1 to the cold passives and then allocate set 2 to the lightning passives. Now check this out. As we weapon swap, our passive tree changes from one build to the other automatically. Whenever we cast the appropriate spell, the character's passives reconfigure on the fly to the correct build for that spell. Basically what that means is you can have multiple weapon combinations that serve different purposes 
meaningfully and your tree will adjust when you change your weapon, right? So you hit X, you saddle up for the next part of the fight. Now, an example of two things that you would be doing this for would be one set up for map clear, one set up for boss fights or single target damage, right? In my head, that's how this mechanic would be applied. There are other things to consider with weapon switching too, such as elemental synergies um, or other skill chain synergies that you might need. So one weapon might proc one effect, the other weapon might proc another effect, i.e. Uh, you've got armor piercing bolts, right? So when you play the mercenary, and this was shown in the Merc gameplay footage, you're going to apply armor break or armor pierce with your uh, armor piercing setup. And then you're going to quickly switch to your impact setup. And then basically that's, you know, you're going to shotgun your way through the enemies that you've just busted the armor through on. That's the way in my mind that this works. To the level of how this could be exercised. And we may see a number of uniques that might actually have interactions with weapon switching as well. I have absolutely no idea. And I find this to be one of the coolest elements because it means like your optimum build is not based on one perfect weapon but it's based on multiple weapons that you'll need to optimize and it makes builds more multi-dimensional as well. Something else to think about as well. I, I find weapon switching is a really cool mechanic that's being added in. All right, so the next one that I've got here is environmental build considerations. And when I talk about that, I, I sort of think about the mercenary showcase in particular and the way that, you know, you were able to shoot uh, ice into the ground and uh, I had a few skills that sort of stick out that sort of would apply this. So obvious, the obvious one is flame wall, right? So flame wall, you shoot your um, your whatever it is, your you know bolts or whatnot or fireballs through the flame wall, picks up increased damage when projectiles pass through the wall, right? And we already know that's in Path of Exile one. The next one's frost wall. So frost walls, the, even in the flavor te text, have the wall will shatter if sufficiently damaged and it has a health rate on it. So if you push it hard enough, it'll deal damage around the broken sections of the frost wall. So frost wall has become not like a, an apply ignite weird mechanic in Path of Exile 1 that happened, but it's become an actual skill where you could use it both for defense and offense means meaningfully. Uh, Frozen Locust was another one that came to mind. So <clears throat> creates chilling ground or chill ground around it, and it can be damaged by you and enemies. If the crystal is destroyed, um, it... it essentially explodes in an icy explosion that deals attack damage but does not use your weapons damage so probably scales up with elemental damage again you can drop it down explode it and inflict damage to enemies um, and this would be something that you would like chain together with another skill or a weapon switch right uh, gas arrow you can detonate any burning effects or detonator skills will explode the gas cloud creating a fiery explosion that's just awesome. I love that. I think that's really innovative and uh, and I'm all for it. Uh, lightning rod, and this comes down to you drop the rod down, uh, which is basically an arrow and then lightning and uh, skills chain and beam to it and things like that, um, which is really cool. Again, this is just like skill chaining. So you would fire off your lightning rod and then, you know, you would start like sparking or arcing to it or whatever. By the way, someone in the comments asked, is spark in the game? Yes, it's in the game. I'll put it on the screen here. Um, oil grenade launcher is another one. So fire a bouncing grenade that releases a pool of oil and covers nearby enemies in oil after a delay. The oil can then be ignited by burn or uh, or burning or fire um, auras. All right. So basically, there, there's a synergy here. Like you know, and again, this is skill chaining. This is weapon switching. Yada yada yada. So you would have an oil grenade launcher, and then you would switch to a fire grenade launcher or a fire arrow shooting crossbow or something like that. Um, shield wall is a really cool one. <clears throat> so basically you uh, ram the shield into the ground, throws up a wall of earth on either side. The walls of earth can then be exploded, which then sort of uh, shatter out to enemies and inflict damage on enemies. I really think this is a skill I'll be playing because it's really cool. And the walls have health, which probably means that also you would be able to do additional damage based on wall health or, you know, who knows how that's going to work yet. Um, and also it's based on building defense builds offense as well. So this could be a really cool thing. You could have like a loadout of all different shield skills. And then, you know, you could pop this to get defense. And then, you know, once you hit the end of your chain, explode the shield wall. And that chain could be developed so that it equates to the amount of damage that chain, at chain outputs matches the amount of wall health that you have left. 
And by the end of the chain, you deplete the wall health and then you reset the chain um, and do it all over again. So that's when I'm, I'm trying to change the way that I look at thinking about builds in Path of Exile 2 to be able to come up with those combinations because that's realistically the direction that we need to move in. And, uh, and yeah, those are just a few of the examples that I have, but there's definitely plenty of others that we probably haven't seen yet. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what other stuff they pop to the game. The other one was like, you could drop down like grenades that don't detonate yet, and then you could hit it with a fire bolt or uh, another grenade, explosive uh, grenade bolt, and it'll cause a super massive explosion. Um, so yeah, we'll see how things play out when the early access comes out. Um, but Mercenary's probably got some of the coolest interactions so far that I can think of. All right, so the last and maybe most key point around approaching builds in Path of Exile 2, especially in the early access, is um, try to not compare yourself to what everybody else is doing. And people often do this, the term keeping up with the Joneses comes to mind. The biggest thing that you should do when you're playing Path of Exile is, or picking a build or going with the build, is play something that you enjoy. Don't just play something because you see a creator playing it or, you know, somebody else is like, hey, you should check this out, rah, rah. Play, this is a great clean slate opportunity to just play skills that you think look dope, quite frankly, and focus on fun. Um, I think a lot of people may come into the game trying to like be the first at something and you know, whatever. Realistically, like you're gonna play with a ton of different skills and you're not gonna know shit. I'm gonna walk into the same situation and be like, this doesn't work, that does work, this doesn't work. The recommendations GG's providers are probably not correct. Um, you know, and then you'll experiment and whatever, but, um, but yeah, play, play a skill that you like and also stick to a play style or select a play style that either at the time you feel like you want to play, um, or is just the play style that you enjoy. For example, I'm going to be playing tanks, right? And making builds for tank players. Um, that's just something that I enjoy because I get satisfaction from face tanking enemies with semi unkillable beast of, uh, tunes. But, uh, you know, my focus is lower DPS, more extreme defenses, because I don't like dying in ARPGs or any game. But, you know, some people like highly mobile builds, some po some people really like bow builds, some people like range. A lot of people are probably going to want to try to play gun builds. But you should play a build that you find fun, interesting, and is going to keep you wrapped up, up into it. If you're feeling like the build is boring, lackluster, it's not for you, it's early access, switch Play something that you enjoy. Don't play something that you just don't find very in, in sort of encapsulating. Anyway, that'd be the uh, the last point that I put on here. Fun, have fun. It's a video game. Don't forget that. Okay, so yeah, I thought I'd just cover off on this. Builds are obviously one thing that I do quite a lot of, um, and I think I'm allowed to say it now. But I partnered with Mobilitics moving forwards as well, and I'll put a link to that down in the description on the video. So check that out. The Path of Exile two pages up. Um, and there's a bunch of creators that are also getting on page with that as well, moving forwards. But uh, yeah, um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and sub uh, to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch. I stream on there often. And uh, also the X or the Twitter, whatever you want to refer to, depends on whether you're old like me and you still call it Twitter. But um, yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, not too many more sleeps left until Path of Exile 2. Anyway, have a good one all.